This is darn tough. Darn Tough is a company out of Vermont founded by Rick Cabot's dad. We interviewed Rick Cabot. This company's been around forever, but here's the amazing thing. They're American. American made, and that hasn't changed, and they survived. Somehow, while every textile company in the world moves overseas, these guys dug in further. So for somebody out there watching and thinking about how the hell can I survive, these guys figured out how to do it. So watch this, learn, and, and, and we'll be back at the end to talk more about this. Let's do it. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. Join the mushroom coffee revolution at foursigmatic.com slash Spartan. We are here for Spartan Up podcast in the sock capital of the world, Northfield, Vermont, where they make darn tough socks with Rick Cabot. Joe, how are you? You know, I've lived in Vermont. It's got to be 14 years now. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a sock capital of the world here in Vermont. Well, we, we are we are the self-proclaimed sock capital of the world. And it's uh, for us, it's not about size. It's about quality. Uh, so we make the best socks in the world. We've been knitting socks here in Northfield since 1978. And uh, Darn Tough is coming on about 14 years old. A lot of people don't know this. I studied textiles and apparel. And in the 80s, late 80s, when I was in school, Everybody manufacturing left the right. United States. Yeah, yeah. You stayed. We stayed. We had a we had a, a, a pretty good private label business throughout the '80s, '90s, and early 2000s. We made for a lot of the big uh, the big names at the time. Um, when they all went offshore, we stuck it out for as long as we could. Um, pretty much put us out of business. We were down to three days a week. What? When was that? Thirty-five people. That was around the end of the '90s, early 2000s. So 2003. 35 but people. You, but you even you you hung on an extra 10 years because most people were going out of business late the, 80s. The right? lo- well, I think most of the garment type folks probably went out of business. Um, the sock people were able to to last a little bit longer. Um, and then, as I said, all of our customers pretty much went offshore. We were down to three days a week, 35 people. Uh, I started Darn Tough in 2003 as a response to. Just try to stay in you, business. You, well, you, so you, but you had the factory. You had the factory. We had a factory, but we we, we didn't have any kind of brand. You had no so customers we, ordering right. anymore. We were making everything for other people. Got it. Um, and, and then and, I said, and, we got to make our own product. But you're you're up against the wall at that point. Correct. Late '90s, you're up against the wall. You've got uh, running out of money. Correct. You've got out of money. You've got young children at that point. No, you just got yeah, married. Yeah, my my son was just born. Son was just born. Yep. And um, and dad started the business. Cabot hosiery, yep. 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 And so wouldn't it have been easier just to pack up and go get a job? Uh, sure, it would have been easier, but... Um, so you're a Spartan. I'm a Spartan <laughs> at heart. I'm darn tough at heart. Yeah. And uh, because of the challenge and because of how difficult it was, uh, it's why I took it on. I, I, I had to turn it around. I wanted to turn it around. We had the ability and the skill uh, and the intelligence to turn it around. But it's a pretty dark moment. I, I'm getting into this because yes, I, I get yes, letters every yep, day from yep. people that say, I'm busted, I'm broken, yep. I don't, right, how do you do it? And so that's why I'm, I'm, that moment is the interesting moment for me and the audience, I think, is, is why do you do that? And how do you do that? I just don't ever really want to ever give up. You know, right. you, you do reach a point where it's very dark. You do reach a point where you feel like you have nothing left in the tank as a Spartan racer might, but then you, you dig deep you uh, have an epiphany, you get a vision, you see success, um, and then you just drive towards that vision of success. I'm, I'm a big believer that you have, to, you have to visualize it. You have to see it, you have to find it within yourself, and then you have to just go after it as hard as you can. And that's exactly what we did. So, so it's late 90s, you're down to a couple of customers, you're yep. down to a few shifts, most people yep. have been let go. Most people were let go, and, laid and, off. And you're sleeping one night, you get this vision, I'm gonna start a brand. Yes. Pretty much, if th- there was a, a big player at the time, um, and I said to myself, they don't make their own product, uh, but we have three generations of hosiery experience. My grandfather was in the sock business also. We have some equipment. We have a dedicated workforce. If I can't produce the best sock out there, guarantee it for life, then nobody should be able to. And that was really the, that driving vision, that there was a big hole in the market. Um, there was no premium product, and I had the vision for it. 
and you could do it. And I could do it, and, and we did do it. And so you go all in. You mortgage the house. What do you do? You have to took another home. mortgage. My father took another mortgage out on his house. I took another mortgage out on, on our house. What, what, Personal moment, guarantees. Do you, do you say everything. to yourself, if this doesn't work, we're completely screwed? Like, what goes through your head? Or is that not even an option? It, it's, it's sort of always out there that it... it, it, it that last thing that could possibly keep you up at, at night other than the challenge is what if it doesn't work? But every day that you succeed, you're further and further away from that ultimate failure. And I just kept focusing on succeeding every day. And then that little failure piece just got smaller and smaller and smaller in the rearview mirror. And we we're, we're still just at made, it today. Made it work. Made it work. Yeah. And you have so, no choice. Well, that's what I was going to ask because I've, I've had a lot of businesses over the years and a lot of them are failed. And when I think back, it's you got to be all in. You have to be all in because it's going to every suck. day. Yeah, right? some I mean, days gonna... are better than others, yeah. and some days you're like, "Why? Well, I'm not capable of doing this. I shouldn't be able to." And if there was a safety it. net, and you weren't like more, you just say, "Ah, you know what?" If there was a safety net, I would have failed. Yeah, I think part of the success that anyone can have is not having that that safety net, knowing that it has to succeed. Right. You have no choice. You have no choice. So, so um, first first sock you make. Under the darn tough brand, I purposely didn't wear socks. By the way, I'm going to put these on. Um, was what? What color? Was it just standard black? What it were was, they? Uh, it was a running sock. It was what we called our, our style 1488. It was uh, somewhat similar to. I mean, you're making a lot of socks now. Yes, now we we, we, we do make a lot of socks. But our first pair of socks uh, was a style much like this, white. It had a blue top on it. We gave away 3,500 pair at wow. the Vermont City Marathon. Folks loved them. Late 90s? Uh, 2003. 2003, okay. Yeah, we gave away 3,500 pair at the Vermont City Marathon. Folks had never worn anything like it. They loved the merino wool. They liked the high-density stitching. Uh, they liked the fact that it form fit to their foot. And, and you emails and guaranteed for life at that, at that point? Yes, yeah. Nice. If they're not the most comfortable, durable, best-fitting socks you can buy, we will exchange send, send, them. send it back. We'll yep. give you a new pair. Yep, yep. And if you can put a hole in them, we replace them. Um, and we study the holes. We look at the data. We always try to just imp- constantly improve, perfect, constantly perfect improving. It. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You got that feedback. You gave them away, so you didn't bring in any revenue. And then you knew you had it. Yeah. If, if one or two people say that they like something, that's generally representative of a much larger set. So, yeah, I, I knew that they were good. You know, I have a passion for this business. I know what looks right. I know what feels good. And the feedback was almost instantaneous, same day. People loved them, and I said, "All right, let's." We got something. Let's go. Let's let's go after it. And 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 then what? Do you start making socks at that point, or do you go out and knock on doors and try to sell them? We didn't really make anything. We didn't have a line. We had one or two styles. I went to a couple of local retailers that were in that outdoor market. Um, they had known Cabot Hosiery, but obviously they, they didn't know Darn Tough. Sure. But I explained the story. I explained uh, the quality of the raw materials, the the experience. Um, the unconditional lifetime guarantee, still made in Vermont, and they were like, "We'll try it." And then once you try it, it's you're not going back. Like anything really good, you just don't you just don't want to go back. And then was it a lot of you going door to door driving? Like initially, the- yep, I was I was going door to door. I hired a sales uh, manager at the time. This was back in 04, 05. Yeah. Went to all the trade shows. Uh, went to our retailers that we had. Convinced them to try it. Stocked their shelves. Uh, made sales calls. Did follow up back to his customer service. Sure. Um, everything. You did everything. Yeah, everything. It was 24 yep. hours a day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and um, how'd the wife feel about all that? Because I, you know, when I work, I'm a workaholic, probably a lot like you. And uh, you know, you got to balance all that. And extreme success requires extreme sacrifice. So. Correct. She was behind me. She was committed. Sort of. She yeah. b- believed in it. Well, behind any great man and success, I'm learning as a great woman. So. A great woman and then a great pair of socks. So, but, there. But in that order. <laughs> in that order. Right. Always, always. So, so where are you today? Our line and our overall strategy is very category specific. So we make uh, we make bike socks, we make hike socks, we make endurance socks, sort of specifically for the, the Spartan type market. Yeah. Uh, we have lifestyle product. We have hiking socks. Uh, we have about thirteen hundred SKUs. Um, we stock all of this product. We make it all here. Still made in Vermont. Uh, we're putting plans together to run uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, Sefra, last time we talked, you were in Puerto Rico on a mission to set up seed banks. We were uh, deep in the mountains working with the farmers to help save the seeds of the indigenous 
crops that are up in there. It's beautiful. It's super biodiverse. I actually saw a lot of new mushroom species I'd never seen before in the forest as well. We're here to talk about Four Sigmatic and the samples they sent and some of the mushroom products. What do you think of all that stuff? I think the Spartan community is all about things that boost longevity and endurance and overall health. And I think a lot of people don't know how awesome medicinal forest mushrooms are. Like if you've never hung out with reishi and chaga and cordyceps and lion's mane, then welcome to, you know, the best medicine on planet earth. I mean, I've loved chaga and used a lot of these mushrooms forever, but usually my experience with chaga is like climbing up a birch tree, breaking down the chaga, breaking it up and drying it and boiling it and making it into tincture. And it's this beautiful, but super long process. The mixtures that they've made are delicious and so easy to use. And as I'm traveling all the time, I mean, I can't take these huge jars of tincture that I always make. So I just slip these little packets in my pocket and it's just like an energy party. I think you're going to start to see that you're going to have a huge boost in your performance and it's delicious. So if you Spartans want to join us on this wild crafting medicinal mushroom expedition through cordyceps and chaga and lion's mane and reishi and matcha and ginger and cacao and chili peppers, go to foursigmatic.com slash Spartan. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com slash Spartan. Foursigmatic.com slash Spartan. See you in the woods. One more thing. I mean, Four Sigmatic, my foraging hat goes off to you. I've spent so many years digging through forest litter to find cordyceps and climbing up trees to find chaga. And then I don't even know, try, like looking for reishi and all of these beautiful ingredients you just have perfectly packaged in very easily transportable and travelable sizes. So you guys are the best foragers I know and blessings of the lion's mane and the cacao and the everything that you've done because from a foraging and wild crafting perspective, it would take me a long time to get all the ingredients into these beautiful little packages. Blessings. With everybody else manufacturing overseas yeah. where labor is cheaper and you're surviving and thriving in, in Vermont, no less. Yep, like, in, like in Vermont. No one would pick Vermont. I, I'd pick Vermont because right. we started here as well. But so, so that just goes to show you how good the product is. It shows you how good the product is, and it shows that ultimately people are willing to, if they understand what you're doing, They'll and if you're it. speaking to them yeah. uh, in their market, they, they will pay for a quality product. It, we don't compete on price, yeah. and I find price ultimately um, you know, not as important as quality sure. and delivery. Yeah. So we, we charge a fair price for them. They are unconditionally guaranteed, so you could buy one pair of socks, wear it out, and if you were so inclined you could return that one pair over and over again so if you're an entrepreneur it's, really a, good price. It, it's a it's a catchy thing to do to say oh money back guarantee was that a scary thing to offer because everybody might i mean socks eventually wear out socks eventually wear out ours you know take that much longer to wear out but but the, the whole the purpose of the unconditional guarantee it really was to show our commitment to the product, our commitment to the customer, our commitment to the category, our commitment to the end user, that, that we would only unconditionally guarantee something like this if we felt that good about the product. And we feel that good about the product because we make the product. It's not offshored. They're not sitting in, in some sure. freighter. And we know all the raw materials. We have good relationships with our suppliers. We know all the people in the factory. So it, it, it seems natural to stand by something that's that good. Tell us about uh, Merino wool. It's very strong. It's a resilient product. It absorbs or wicks it, it, moisture. Everybody says it's very hot. It's not hot. Uh, that is sort of one of those uh, misconceptions ab ab about wool. It's also naturally antimicrobial, so you can wear it for for days, weeks, months at a time, and it, and it will not smell. Well, I'm going to put mine on. I'm, I'm not going to take them off for 30 days. I'm going to see how that goes. Do I, I, every new product uh, I wear test? I wear this. I wear it for 30 days straight, just to see what the wear is. If they smell, do they sag down? Do, do, do they stay up? And 30 days into it, every day you know for you 30 got a good days, product. Yeah. they don't smell. That's great. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Pretty Hello, refreshing, you know. To um, it, it's hard for me to get to interview and talk to people that one came out of the darkness like mm -hmm. you did, right? And and have been successful in a really tough industry. I mean, you're up against Warren Buffett. Right, he's, he's um, and the big guys uh, manufacturing in very inexpensive places, sitting in Vermont, but um, but also just a cool company, right? So it just must be a lot of fun going to work every it's, day. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun growing. It's a lot yeah. of fun 
figuring out constantly what do our consumers want? How can we make it better? Are we giving them the best? Yeah. Is it what they want next year? Is it what they want you know, in 18 months? We, we try to look out as far as we, we can and make sure that we're giving our customer uh, what they want and then more, what, um, than, more while, than what they while want. While I put my socks yep. on, give us some advice for, uh, for those aspiring entrepreneurs or people that are kind of stuck in life and don't know which way to go or how to succeed. Um, you know, I'll say one of the best things that, that happened to me was almost going out of business. And you learn a lot of lessons. Um, you learn what you're made of. You learn what you're capable of. And if you really have a vision and you really have a good idea and you believe in it and you believe in yourself, uh, just don't give up. That's the one thing, really the only thing that separates winners from losers is losers give up. But you might have to pivot. You pivoted. You have to right. be flexible. Right. You, have to, you have to course adjust as the course adjusts or as the course changes. Um, but ultimately, you have to always sort of steer back to that vision and what you got started with in the first place. Be passionate about it. Be passionate when you need to be passionate. Be dispassionate when you need to be dispassionate. Look at the numbers. Uh, you know, you've, you've got to take into consideration uh, a lot of inputs. I think the flexible um, uh, statement was interesting. We interviewed uh, General McChrystal, and he yep. said um, the environment today is changing so rapidly. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're rigid, you're dead. Yeah, right. I, I agree. And what guides us in here every day uh, is the fact that we have yet to reduce our, our best sock. We we come in here every day thinking we're going to make it better. That's and, that's a great. And hopefully philosophy. we we hopefully we never make our best sock. Well, so when we were walking through, I, I stopped at the station where the returns are coming in. Yes. Yeah. Um, we talked about it a little bit before, but I'd, I'd be personally sweating that, right? Like, I don't... You know, we're not, we're not looking for socks. Uh, but when they do come back, um, we catalog them. So we, we, we're constantly looking for feedback. We set up a process to be able to get that in the effort of trying to, you know, improve something that we think is, is already... So look, look, at, look, looking at it as a as a way to improve, not necessarily All, uh, always. Not necessarily as an expense. It's actually it's actually it's a, uh, it's, your market it's, testing. It's, it's live. It's almost live data. Right. It's a great better. metaphor for life, right? Maybe we could all apply that to our own lives. Like uh, take take feed, negative feedback. Absolutely, and, and don't think of it as negative. Right. You know, it's 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 Constru all it's constructive. It's it's how you receive it and how you process it. I walked through the factory. I spent yeah. about an hour in there, yep. and um, I told you I study textiles and. I was intrigued because there's all these stops along the way to do uh, quality control. Mm -hmm. There's um, your hand packaging, you're washing them, you're drying them. It seems to me, as a business owner, you could cut eight of those steps out, save some money, and no one would even notice. Well, certainly the people that lost their jobs would. Um, like I said, we've been in we've been in this in this community since 1978. Um, there's three generations of family in there, other than myself being the third generation in the sake company. So, you know, we we don't waste money, we don't throw money away, but what we do want to keep on as many people as we can. A lot of the quality steps are to ensure that the quality is maintained throughout the entire cycle of the process. We start with a Kona yarn and we end with a sock. I mean, you're like, um, you're like the Steve Jobs of socks. We, we, we are transformative, <laughs> yes. We are disruptive, I guess you could No, you, but I heard he was you, a maniac you, 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 in the you, factories. It had to be perfect. It had to be white. I mean, that's what I saw yes, in there. It, it, it was it, a it's maniacal clear. Um, attitude towards a sock. It, it's, 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 it's our livelihood. It's, it's what your athletes depend on. Um, you know, to us, it's... Not a sock. To us, it's, it's our name. To us, it's personal. Well, I, I will tell you, and a lot of the Spartans might not know this, but I, I did a lot of long-distance races, mm -hmm. 300, 400, very long-distance races. The one thing that stops you in those races, one thing aside from your mind quitting, yep. your feet. So if you, if you don't get your feet right, it's game over. So, so um, for the listeners, yep. let's, do, let's do three big takeaways. You've got to have a vision. Like, don't start till you see it. Have a plan. You got to be flexible within the plan, but you have to have a plan. And as important, and maybe the most important thing, is never, ever give up. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how dark it appears, keep going. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Thank you. We, we appreciate can't, we it. We can't wait for the Spartan socks. That was pretty cool for me because Darn Tough is not a new brand to me. Uh, I first heard of Darn Tough. 
the first time I came down to Vermont, I came to do a death race training camp, and it was at a peak ultra marathon that you were yeah. putting on. Yeah. And um, I remember they were giving out darn tough uh, stickers, and I put one on my truck because I thought it was pretty cool. And so for years, I drove around with darn tough, and I had the one pair of socks I think that I got at the uh, at the ultra. And um, but since then, I've actually become a huge fan of darn tough. Um, but but one, one thing I want to say because we've mentioned the words darn tough probably seventy six times now already. And we're never commercial about any of our podcasts. Yeah. And so this is less about the commercial, not a commercial. side. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. this is not a commercial. This is, this is about uh, a company. Quality. Uh, that doesn't mean anything that they're an American company, but the fact is it's tough to compete in the manufacturing it's business. It's darn tough, it, Joe. It's darn tough <laughs> to compete. <laughs> Obviously, the manu- they did a good job with branding, right? Yeah, they did sure. a great job with branding. Yeah. And um, they're in Vermont, which is like uh, the least competitive state. Uh, and a to really be in. hard state to do business really in. Really hard state to do business in. And so um, it's just it just fits our mantra of finding gritty people. But, gritty but it companies. is where Spartan was founded. I mean, it, it can't be Spartan, that, it is that where, awful for business. Well, it's not that it's awful for business. It's really hard for businesses to, to Get a start, uh, uh, survive, and thrive. And it's not, it's not, a, um, it's not a state that welcomes business. You know, uh, Nevada and so forth brings businesses in by giving tax sure. breaks and stuff. No, Vermont adds taxes to businesses. So, so a, qu- a, qu- a quick question I just want to get uh, from each of you guys. What's something you took from that episode, that, are, that, that interview, that, um, that really resonated with you that, that, that people can apply? Well, as, as Joe would say, I'm the, I'm the communist on the show. <laughs> but, but I really like the fact that, that this guy was thinking about how to make a company that success for him included success for his employees, success for his community. And so, you know, when, when Joe asked, like, you know, well, you know, you have all these modern machines, like, doesn't it make you crazy to have to pay all these people? Like, w- wouldn't it, would anybody even notice if they weren't there? And he said, well, they would notice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the deal is, not just so that I don't sound too conservative as communism over there, <laughs> um, I've been sweating payroll for 35 years. So it has nothing to do with, if I, if I had my way, Spartan would measure profitability and number of lives saved, and the government would just pay us. But so this is, this is just a, a positive, mentor. right? This yeah. is just like one of the ways that this guy is doing things the hard way and, and embracing yeah, adversity. Yeah, no, no. He's, is, making, is, he's is actually making it harder for exactly. himself right, in order right. to do the right thing, exactly. which is amazing. That, that's my point. Yeah, well, amazing. Okay, well, he's making it darn tough he's on himself. Darn <laughs> okay, so so I'm just going to keep saying I think darn. Johnny is being paid on the side by darn tough, <laughs> just so you know. Well, does anyone in know? Socks. Let's first start by like defining what darning is. Does anyone know? Uh, I yes. You it, say it a few times. It's, it's casting someone into heck. <laughs> Darn. Okay. I oh. darn you. Yeah. <laughs> I darn you to heck. Sorry, go ahead. Well, okay, so darning means when you get a hole in your sock that you sew it up. That's mm-hmm. like the adjective, verb? We, we know okay. dar- darning is fixing okay, socks. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. So look, his business was failing, right? And instead of being like, oh, this piece of crap sock is garbage. I'm going to throw it out and go buy a new one. No, right? he when actually, he like, actually he looked it. at the one. Then, what's the one thing we... Our little company, because it wasn't called Darn Tough at the time, right? What's the one thing we're great? We're great at making socks. We yeah. can make better socks than anybody out there. And so we went back to the drawing board, and he said, uh, "Let's Bod. do this." Bod. So, so, and so he said, "Let's do this." I watched this interview with my yeah. wife, and there's a a, a um, segment that jumped out at Andrea, and she reminded me of it, or a, a piece in it, and it was that he said, "When things get really tough, when your gas tank's on empty, that's when you lean in. That's when you visualize success and you go make it happen." So instead of saying is, well, we've talked about no excuses, and that's the, sort of the theme for Spartan for 2018 is no excuses. No There's, excuses, There are baby. all kinds of excuses. There are a million sock makers out there. Everyone sent them to China. Um, By you the know, way, you, you probably wouldn't be upset if he came up with an excuse as to why he should have closed down the business. Absolutely. You wouldn't even call it an excuse. Right. You would just say would it's just a reason. Say that's yeah. just a reason. Right. But, it, but instead, he said, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to be in the business of making socks. I want to make them in Vermont. I want to make the best socks in the world. I want to have this great company. And so he just did it. He leaned did in it? and he did it. By the way, again, it's going to sound like a commercial. I apologize, everybody listening. The socks are fucking awesome. <laughs> they are. They're I, awesome. I'm actually wearing yeah. one right I, now. The, he said to me, he, you know, he taught me, you guys heard it on, on the podcast. Um, by the way, because it's wool, it won't smell. And so I tested them. Antimicrobial. They don't smell. No. I, well, I went 10 wool. days straight. They don't smell. And nice. I, yeah, you're on about day nine right now, I can tell. <laughs> and, they, and they don't smell. They're great. But, yeah. my, but my point was, I don't think I finished it, is like he mended... <laughs> He mended a business, right? And so instead of always, whenever something fails and it's not the best or the best technology or the newest, you don't just throw it out. And that's like the kind of the principles that this great family owned company is instilling. This is like proper. He's saying it's a lifetime guarantee. And just like when you talk to a friend, it's like, hey, there's something about this that didn't work. It's like, 
let's take time and care and attention to make the best product we can so you can have this and your kids can have this and like you can just be like socks check done like let's live our life and you return them if they rip yeah right yeah. And, and that guarantee. is the cool thing, right? The return them. They didn't take that as like... No, they welcomed as like, it. Right, it wasn't They're like, like oh, criticism. Oh, we get a return. Yeah. We get to see why a yeah. sock failed. Feedback. Yeah. It's and like, that was like brilliant know. personally. Yeah. We should all do that. It's yeah. like when people drop out of the we races. We should all welcome that kind of feedback, yeah. right? Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like imagining being that confident in your product that I could say, these are my grandfather's socks. He wore them. My dad wore them. I got them. There's a hole in them, and I returned them. Then you got to darn it. I like it. If you do a Spartan race, and you're not stronger tougher and better at the end of it, we'll give you your money back. Can wow. Wow. Um, How would we measure I, I, I'd have the lawyers look at it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good idea. <laughs> and with that said... Hey, your lawyers should look at Spartan Up Podcast. Not just your lawyers, but everyone. Go to YouTube, go to iTunes, check it out every week. This is going to be an unbelievable season, 2018, the year of no excuses. You have no excuse to not subscribe to the podcast and watch it every week. And antimicrobial socks. Toodles. <laughs> this episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. Join the mushroom coffee revolution at foursigmatic.com slash Spartan. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.com.